Hi. Now, I'm assuming that you already have seen the earlier videos where we've been looking at the mean value of a function f of x. It was given by f bar, where f bar was equal to this integral and x was defined over this interval from a to b. Now what I want to do is take this further where we look at a real constant k and apply some transformations to f of x and look at what happens to the new mean. Now I've got three results here which we need to learn okay, for transformations of graphs and how it affects the mean. If you've got negative f of x, then the new mean is negative of the old mean, f bar. Okay, And if you multiply f of x by the constant k, then the new mean is k times the old mean, f bar. And finally, c, if you add a constant to f of x, then the new mean is the old mean plus that constant. Now, I've left out two other transformations that you might be familiar with, but they do not work for this type of exercise, okay? That is, they do not work for f of x plus k and f of kx, okay? Now, what I want to do now is just demonstrate this by graph, and also maybe you'll be asked to prove these results, and I'll show you how we prove those. And you've got a question at the end that you might like to try. Okay, so first of all, let's show you the graphical approach to this. Let's just suppose we have y equals f of x. And it's defined over this interval for x going from 1 to 3. And let's say the mean, f bar, is equal to 6. Okay, now if we take the first one here, minus f of x, remember... That is a reflection of f of x in the x-axis. And what will happen is that the mean, which was 6, becomes negative 6. Okay? For this one here, where we multiply our value, f of x, by a constant, let's suppose I multiply it by 2. Remember, this causes a stretch, scale factor 2, parallel to the y-axis, with the x-axis invariant. And you can see that our mean has been doubled, okay? The new mean, f bar, is now 12 for y equals two lots of f of x. Next, in C, we have got a transformation, which is a translation. I've added four units on to f of x, and you can see the graph has gone up by four units. And the new mean has gone up four units from six plus another four, ten. Now, maybe you can appreciate now why this works over this interval, a, b. It will not work over these ones because, remember, f of x plus k causes the graph to shift negative k units, okay, in the x direction, parallel to the x axis. And so what's going to happen is our graph is going to go away from this interval. And f of kx, okay, is a stretch parallel to the x axis of scale factor 1 over k. So this is going to either shrink or expand, okay? So we're not containing our graph in this interval as such. This domain would have to change, okay? But with these transformations, we're still working in the same domain, okay? In this case, from 1 to 3. Now, as I said earlier, you might be asked to prove these results, and they're fairly straightforward, as I'll show you. So if you had to prove these, okay, let's take a look at the proof of the first one, A, here. The mean of negative f of x. Well, by the definition here, if you're going to find that mean, it's going to be 1 over b minus a 
the integral from a to b of minus f of x with respect to x. Now I can pull this negative one out the front here, okay? And what we have here is f bar. So we end up with negative f bar. Okay, nice and easy that one. Now for proving this one, okay, part b here, then this too is fairly straightforward. If we're looking at the mean of kf of x, then it's going to be 1 over b minus a, and then we've got the integral from a to b of kf of x with respect to x. k being a constant, I can pull it out the front of the integral. And now you can see that I have got k times 1 over b minus a times that integral of f of x from a to b. That's going to be then k f bar. All right? And finally, for this part c here, where we add a constant to f of x, if you're trying to prove this one, the mean of f of x plus that constant k is going to be the integral then from a to b of all of f of x plus k, and it's 1 over b minus a at the front here. Now you'll see with this one, I've opted to break this down to two parts then. So we've got the integral of the first part, f of x, okay, over a and b, and then you've got 1 over b minus a out the front. And then I've added this to 1 over b minus a, times the integral of k, all right? And the integral of k is going to be kx. I pulled that constant k out the front, so you've just got the x in here between those limits a and b. Now this first term here is f bar, and if you substitute these limits in for x, you're going to get b minus a here. And the b minus a's cancel out, leaving you with the k. So you end up with f bar plus k. All right, so I hope you've been able to see how to do that part, should you be asked to prove any of these results. Okay, I've got a question here that you might like to have a go at, just give you further practice on this. Give you a few moments just to pause the video if you'd like to have a go. When you come back, fast forward it if you want to check your answers quickly or just go through it slowly with you. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Don't forget, do fast forward if you want to check your answers quickly. But what we have here is just a reminder Remember, if f of x has a mean f bar, f bar is defined with this integral here over the interval a to b. So for this question, we need to find, first of all, the mean then of f of x given by f bar. And if you're going to do that, then this is what you should have. We've got f bar equals 1 over b minus a. So if you subtract those limits from one another, pi upon 4 and 0, you're going to get pi upon 4 there in the denominator. And we've got to integrate cosine 2x from 0 to pi upon 4. The integral of cosine 2x then is a half sine 2x. And I've pulled out the constant a half then in front of sine 2x. Substitute our limits in and you're going to end up with a half of 4 over pi, which is 2 over pi, and you're going to get 1 when you substitute pi upon 4 in for x, and 0 when you substitute 0 in for x. And simplify that, and you get 2 over pi. So that's f bar. Now when it comes on to part b then, we're just adding 8 over pi to f of x. So as far as the mean goes, we just need to add 8 over pi to that result. So for b then, if you add 8 over pi to 2 over pi, you're going to get 10 over pi. For c, 3 times f of x, the new mean value, is going to be 3 times 2 over pi. So if you do that one, you're going to get 6 over pi for that mean. And for d, negative f of x, the new mean for that then is going to be negative 2 over pi, as you can see. Okay, so 
hope it's given you some idea then on how we get the new mean then when we transform f of x by any of these ideas. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, you'll give us a like if you felt that this was useful and it'd be great if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. So hopefully see you in another video. Bye for now.